20. We are 20 days in to our amazing conversation. And I cannot wait for you to hear my BFF in ministry tonight. I tell you, as I get our watch party set up, hello, Cheryl and Sean, I love it. You are already in here, ready to get us started. So let us know that you're here. Give us a thumbs up, send us a heart, let us know that you are in the community and ready to start this conversation. Awesome, our watch party is set. Hello, and Cheryl and Cheryl, tonight you are back to back with one another. <laughs> hello, and Chanel, yes, hello, hello. Wonderful, Nancy, I see you jumping in. Absolutely, give us a wave, give us a thumbs up. Send some hearts. Now remember to share this conversation. Share day 20 as we embark on another perspective to this conversation on joy. Yes, Donna, hello, hello, awesome. So as people are logging in, hello, Chela. Yes. Awesome to see everyone jumping in. Gina, wonderful. Yes, Cheryl already said, we're not playing. We are here. I see people are jumping right in. I love it. Essie, hello. Our regulars just have, some of you haven't missed a night. This is amazing. So as people are jumping in, Hello, Valerie. Yes. Aww. I want to be able to provide context for this amazing woman. Um, I always share uh, how I uh, connected and have met. So we sat on um, the planning team. What was it, 2016, 2015? Yeah. 2015, 2016. Uh, that brought Priscilla Shire to uh, the Pennsylvania area. And so that was our initial contact. But there are those people that when you first meet them, your spirit is just like, we are going to be friends forever. <laughs> and in this conversation about joy, there is one particular time and and Michelle I don't know if you remember this but that during that period in time I was stuck in a job that was toxic and stressful and kept me in a state of mind of worry and literal exhaustion and I remember there was a day in which I was at my wits end and the one thing that got me through that day was the team was coming together for a prayer um, session and I knew I was going to hear Michelle sing. And so all day long, I said, I, I can get through this day because Michelle is gonna sing and <laughs> that worship, that worship that just comes through her, it is just going to settle my soul. So I pressed through that day <laughs> to get to that evening, to hear you sing, to okay. hear your praise, to hear your worship, and just your spirit. Uh, as And earlier this week, last week, we talked about the power of joy with Iron Sharpens Iron Relationships. And you have been that for me, my sister. I, and I am so blessed to have you. I can say uh, mother, woman of God, ministry leader, Christian author, sing. I could give several, several titles, but the one that is closest to my heart is a dear, dear friend. And I am thankful, Michelle Giletto, that you are with us tonight. So I want to give you a second to 
kind of tell us about you and your ministry, and then we'll jump in the conversation. Well, thank you. That was so sweet. And I do remember that night, and I was ecstatic that I was going to get to see you. We sat together at a planning meeting. It was the first time I met you. And at the end of the day, I said, this is going to sound weird, but I want to be your best friend. And you were like, I totally get it. I do. I do. <laughs> And that's, that was the start. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. I was, you know, I mean, the Lord just opened up ministry to me really through online ministry. Like now it's probably eight, nine years ago. And I, I'm like you, you know, I work full time and sometimes it feels like we do ministry full time, even though we don't mm -hmm. and um, raise, you know, I have two adult kids. They're in college now. So I consider them adult children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've, we've been through the highs and the lows and, and the Lord is faithful and we just keep getting up every day. And, you know, it's here we are. So it's, um, it's been an interesting time recently being home. These two are supposed to be in college and now they're home as you know, with yes. your daughter's home. <laughs> we are not homeschooling, thank goodness, like our friends. Yes. But, uh, it is, it's, I sometimes I feel like dorm mom, you know, here. Um, mm -hmm. And you got to get the meals out on time. And I'm not good at that. So <laughs> they've had to be a little more self sufficient. But, but it's been an interesting time. It's been an interesting time at work. I work in healthcare. So obviously, this is a, really crazy time, no matter what, what your job is, it's a crazy time. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've really seen what the Lord's doing to really give everybody a similar experience. I, I read something yesterday that I really liked. It said, we're not in the same boat, but we're in the same storm. Yes. The boat is a little bit different right now, but we are in the same storm. Yes. And yes. there's a, there's a great deal of unity in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, that actually speaks to the whole reason why uh, I started this joy conversation. So Fearless Conversations with the Limitless God has a calendar. Uh, yes, <laughs> the book <laughs> has a, a calendar that accompanies the book. And when I saw that joy was our principle for fearlessness, for April, and I understood in my gut the struggle and the tug of war we would be having, even as believers, never mind the world, but even as believers, that we would be struggling between our emotions and our faith, the struggle between our circumstances and what we knew, we, what we know to be true about the character of God, that having an intentional focus that this isn't about happiness, but this is about the inheritance of Holy Spirit given joy that is the foundation and strength that will move us through this experience. And that's why it so resonates with me your um, topic for tonight of joy, spirit versus flesh. And because that for me, it speaks to that natural tug of war that we are all in this storm and, tuss and if we're honest, we're tussling with it. But how does joy help us navigate this storm? Oh, well, first of all, I absolutely went bonkers when I saw that joy was on the calendar because I thought how into the details God is. Yes. He is so into the details. You wrote this book how many years ago? <laughs> exactly. When we flipped, I'm telling you, from, from sometime in March to sometime in April, I was not feeling any joy. And that was why this whole idea about identifying joy in the flesh versus the spirit. Really, I was having no joy in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And and what it did was it reminded me what I needed to do to stay in the flow of the Holy Spirit because I wasn't doing those things either. Mm -hmm. My quiet time had become, I said, like dry bones. Like it just, I, I felt so emptied out from this COVID and, and I don't think I'm alone. 
I wasn't afraid of getting COVID. I wasn't really afraid of family members getting COVID. I don't know what it was. I, but what God I revealed to me through a couple of weeks was I was certainly trying to control things. I had put my hands back on the steering wheel and was trying to control everything. And the minute I crossed over from spirit into flesh, things went out of whack. My thinking went crazy. How I felt in, you know, everything got worse. Mm -hmm. The minute I took my eyes off of Jesus, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and started looking at the things of the world and not looking at the things of the world through the lens of the spirit. And certainly not looking at things of the world through the lens of joy. I was complaining. I was contradictory. And, you know, I wasn't those things in my work life, but I was those things within my thought life. Right. Which which can be huge, even more powerful. Right. Well, and that's also where all of the, you know, the like just the emotional garbage, you know, if, when your thought life is not healthy, nothing is going to be that healthy. Yes. Um, so, you know, God just really revealed to me and through it all, I could see that during this time, what did he do? He leveled the playing field, right? Everybody is dealing with the same thing. Everybody in the world is dealing with the same thing. When has that ever Maybe when Noah, when the earth was flooded, right? everybody in the world was dealing with the same thing. But when is the last time we've had something like this? Mm-hmm. And then when you think about it, what, what did he do? He focused on shelter, food, water. And, you know, a lot of people are turning their eyes toward heaven again. They're looking back at, at God and, um, and, and suddenly, love, love is so important. We're not taking for granted that you can hug your children when you can't, or you can hug your parents when you can't, and see the people you love. Um, I was going back into the office on Friday. I've been working mostly from home, and I had some team members coming in. And Thursday, when I found out they were coming in, I was so excited, I cried. And I said to my kids, I said, I'm never going to complain about my team again. And if you're watching this, I never complain about you. <laughs> but I it was just, I was over the moon ecstatic that I was going to see them because I love them. And they, you know, and we love working together. And, um, but I was getting just dripped up with just, just feelings of fear and uncertainty and discontent, which was why I opened your book back up. And what I'm also hearing as you're talking, how this, how we're all in the same storm, but he is forcing us to reconnect with what are the key priorities that in my word, I have told you to focus on and or release yourself from. So acknowledging I've told you not to fear And I've absolutely told you to love. And so in this, in this season, it's an opportunity for us to reprioritize what he holds as most important and then create that accountability to pull, pull that mirror up. Yeah. What spirit and what's flesh and will we be honest about the two? Yeah, what I what I realized was our feelings should be indicators for us. They should like like indicate, okay, something's going off course here or you need to course correct here or this needs some right thinking, but they shouldn't be dictators. And during that period of about a month, I was letting my feelings dictate everything. Everything. I love that. Wait, can you say that again? Feelings Feelings should be indicators, not dictators. Mm. How many of us switch that around and will and and will get stuck in a cycle of allowing our feelings to di- dictate our perception, our behavior, our responses, and create this spiral 
that we are stuck in and then a cycle of, of frustration because we can't see our way out. Right. And that is exactly where I was. And fortunately, you know, I'm, I'm a younger believer, right? So I accepted Christ when I, in about 2003 and, but I really didn't get into the word until about 2008. But since I have, I really try to take all the events in my life and run them through the filter of the word of God. That is, that is the only thing that I know to do at this point. Mm -hmm. And so I had to go in and I had to like start to figure out, uh, spiritually from his word, what was going on. And then the other thing I really tried to do was I tried to analyze how it felt in my body because I want those in, I want to know next time. I don't want to, I don't want to waste another month. I want to have the joy. This there's been, I had so many opportunities to sow seeds of joy and I don't know if I did or I didn't because I was so in my head and I don't know what I was sowing. And you know what we have talked about in previous conversations that if we're not careful, we will miss the specific opportunity that he is designing in each one of us, especially as believers. We have been, and I was talking uh, in one of my coaching sessions with uh, one of the members that I coach. We, this has been a train prior up to now, we have had the opportunity to be in a training season. And we're now, and it's now time to show up. And the evidence of, have you been training? Have you been lifting weights? Because if you didn't lift weights, getting in his word, spending time with him, to jump into this season now and try and lift a 25 pound weight, and you haven't been practicing with the five and the eight, we're, we're struggling. Yeah, but, we can do it. Right, we can't do it. Can't but do it. if we don't take time to actually now reconcile, I love how you just share, take our emotions and our feelings and send it through the filter of the word. What is the word saying about that? And what am I missing or could I miss if I don't pay closer attention? So powerful. And, but I want you to underscore, because we talk about the practical on joy. Right. You were just saying you wanted to pay attention to the sensations, the, fe the, the actual feelings in the body. So talk some more about that. Well, I always look at things uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Okay. So physically, I was feeling um, a tightness like in my throat and in my chest. I cried every day. Mm. I cried every day knowing that I had to make decisions that were going to affect my team and their ability to collect paycheck. Cried every day for a month over that. Now, everybody in the world is faced with this. I am no special, no different, but that was what was happening through my body. I was tired. I couldn't sleep, though. I was up, I was up and I'd be up praying all night long. I would just wake up and pray. I'd fall asleep for 20 minutes, wake up and pray. And I just, I couldn't get a good night's sleep. And then I started to have just like, kind of just like, I don't know, my, my, my think thought life just wasn't mm -hmm. healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that I'll deal with in the emotional side, you know, mm -hmm. and when I'm physically in the spirit, I'm clear minded, I'm rested. I have energy. I, I can feel an accomplishment. I, I'm not feeling overwhelmed. I'm, it's just, there's an ease, right? The word, every time I think about living in the spirit, the word that comes up is always ease, right? I love that. So emotionally, I, you know, one of the things that I do, I don't know about anybody else, but I think I'm not special in this. A lot of my girlfriends, we tend to do this. I will see a picture, hear a story, see a person on the street, and I start making up a story about them that I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's always negative, and I'm always the victim in it, and it's just a mess, right? Can't mm -hmm. do that. Um, so, and then just exaggerated feelings, just not, just not realistic feelings, having an irrational response to something. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. right? So many of us that are still working and many of us that aren't working, there's so much that's out of our control. So why are we trying to control it? I was still trying to control things, you know? I was literally just thinking this. I'm like, that's control. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then, then feelings in the flesh, um, just, or feelings in the spiritual from the flesh, like I said, my quiet time was, I said it was dry bones. It was Ezekiel. It was, it was withered and old and decaying. I thought about um, all the Psalms and the Proverbs that um, speak about a crushed spirit. And that was, that was what I was feeling, you know, just kind of a crushed spirit as opposed to, you know, feeling focused, you know, once I could start to identify it and put a name on it, um, my quiet time became fruitful again. Because I was able to go right into the word and say, okay, this is where I'm struggling right now. What's God's response to this? What is, what needs to be my response based on his word? Um, and then things start to abound, right? Then you start to be and see fruit in your life and you see the abounding of love and peace and mercy. And then again, there's just an ease that you don't get when you're not operating in the spirit. And there was a great, I think I told you about this. I have to find my, yes, there was this great um, quote from John Piper that I, I found mm. in one of my warnings. And it said, the spirit is a leader like a locomotive on a train. We do not follow in our strength. We're led by his power. And I loved yes. that visualization of the spirit and all the fruits of the spirit, we're focusing on joy, but all the fruits of the spirit, and he's, we're, we're just coming behind in his power. I don't need to be in power, in control, just following in his power. And then those things just abound. They're just full and they just are, it becomes a whole surrounding in your life. Um, and, but I, what I'm hearing though is that there has to be a humbling of the spirit of our spirit and humbling of our flesh in order to even get on the train. Because yeah. we, we will sit on the platform pouting because this doesn't look the way we wanted it to look and miss the whole train. And if we get on the train and and really engage in the power of the Holy Spirit, that's what opens up our thought life, opens up our spirit, allows us to really begin to acknowledge what's happening in us and what could potentially happen through us if we get on the train and let him drive. That is so important. <laughs> We've gotta be willing to follow the leader, right? Yeah. You know what? There was a quote, um, and I've been rereading uh, The Wounded Heart by Dr. Um, da Dan Allender, and it connects with that, the whole humbling of our spirit and, and letting go of control. And it says, God does not play by our rules, hmm. nor resolve our wound, and ache as we desire. Therefore, we leave God's world and create one that is more palatable to our taste, even if it robs us of life and love. We will trade in the, the life and love of the Holy Spirit by pouting because if, if it doesn't look like, well, I don't wanna work from home or I don't wanna have to homeschool or get caught up in the distraction and we'll create, just as you shared, we'll create our own scenario and miss out on life and love that he is offering if we got on the train. So good. So yes, because we wanna keep it like what we think is safe and comfortable. And again, <laughs> Try to control it, not always trusting. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what, what for you were some practical ways that you, you, so you shared you went back and you 
filtered everything through the word. You paid attention to your body. So when you felt that trigger, I'm not gonna stay in that trigger. I know what that feels like, so I'm going to shift. Were there any other practical tools that helped you really recognize and discern between joy in the spirit and fighting with the flesh? Yeah, I definitely think that I spent a lot of time in Galatians 5, which isn't always just, it's not just focused on joy, but it is a great little couple of verses about spirit versus flesh. So it really helped me to guard against some things. I was able to identify through that some triggers. Like in that, it says in verse uh, 19 to 21 um, about the different it says the acts of the flesh are obvious and there's obvious ones, sexual immorality, impurity, fits of rage, jealousy, but you know, idolatry and witchcraft. And like, normally I would look at that and I'd glaze over, but what it was, was I was like, I recognize triggers through Facebook, through Netflix. I do not need to binge watch every Netflix series that everybody is watching and talk about it and obsess about it and decide mm -hmm. that Carol Baskin is definitely guilty and she should still be under <laughs> investigation. Um, but, you know, <laughs> you know, that, you know the, you, this just not, it doesn't, it's not that it's healthy or unhealthy for somebody. I don't need to be watching it. Mm -hmm. Right. It just mm -hmm. is. I don't need to do that. Um, the other thing was in there, it talked about hatred. And I'm like, well, I don't hate anybody, which is not true because I, I can't say that I've never used that word. But we try to guard against that word. Mm -hmm. But we say things like, I can't stand. I can't stand this. Or this is ridiculous. Or I'm so over this. That's all to me hate speech. That to me is speech mm -hmm. that if I continue to speak those words, I'm going to keep cycling backwards into the flesh. Right? Yeah. I want to be able to stay on guard to that and, and stay in the flow of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then a really big one for me was, and I never noticed this before in studying this, but it says the things that of the flesh, it says dissensions. And then it also says, um, hold on. It says discord literally says discord and then four or five words later, it says dissensions and dissension is disagreement that leads to discord. And I thought, okay, if God is saying it, if he says it once, we have to heed it. If he says it twice, we know he thinks it's really important. If he's saying it twice within the same sentence, I have to pay attention to it. And I was taken back to this time last year, I was prepping to speak at a women's conference first weekend in May, and we were talking about unity. And unity in, in the Christian sense, unity in the spirit. Um, we went through all the love one another commands, which there are hundreds of. And I was just reminded that even though there are decisions being made right now on a, whether they are on a national, state, local, your family, your work, whatever they are, there are so many things that are happening that are outside our control, but we have still have to remain unified and we have to find a way to do that. And for me, guarding my speech in my thought and in what comes out of my mouth is going to really be a first and important step to do that. Um, but just having the awareness about it has just helped to reframe for me um, and reprioritize. You said that word before. Reprioritize that staying unified in the spirit with one another and all those love one another commands and still looking to serve others, which when our worlds get smaller, it becomes smaller, harder and harder to serve one another. But there are things we can do and you see people making masks and you see the friends dropping off Dunkin' Donuts on somebody's front porch and all these sweet gestures and, and moms homeschooling kids that have no idea what they're doing. And they are just going at it with full hearts and open hands. And they're just trying to do it. That's what we need to be focusing on. And keeping ourselves safe, yes. But 
we have such an opportunity here. Like you said, God has put everybody in a timeout, a time out. Mm -hmm. And we want to come out of this stronger. Like you said, we want to be coming out of it. We're lifting the 25 pound weights and not, you know, stumbling over, not having used this time well. And that making that a priority really helped me to, to re focus on how am I going to make this, how am I going to come out of this stronger and really use this time as he wants me to use this time? Yes. It is not about what I feel like. It's about obedience. Yes. Will we focus on obedience? It is not about my emotions. And that's why we're focused so much on the word joy and not happiness, because it is a state of being, not a place of emotion. And it really is birthed out of a desire to be obedient to him. And I love how in every situation, you are going straight back to the word. And what is the word saying about that? And I need to hold myself accountable because in one of our previous joy conversations, we talked about how we are a representation of his letter. We are his walking letter to the world who is now, as you shared earlier, there are so many people turning to faith, turning to prayer, wanting to know more about God. And this is our opportunity. If we're walking in obedience, to show them light that they, that can confound them, but bring them closer in. And we can't miss, we cannot waste or miss this moment. I love people are saying, I love this. We are commanded to love one another. Absolutely. Yes, with a renewed mindset, coming out of this with a renewed mind. Esther says, yes, obedience to his will, not mm -hmm. ours. Right. Are we willing to actually recognize what if this season and moment, people always talk about purpose, like finding my purpose, why am I here? What if this is tied to your assignment? Yes. And you're getting ready to miss your assignment in this season because you didn't like what the teacher is giving. And we miss it. So Michelle, I tell you, this time flies by so fast. <laughs> Half an hour flies by so fast. I, I want it, as we close out this 30 minutes, I want, I want you to think about someone who's in the storm and they are tired and they recognize that the, the flesh is absolutely dictating how they're seeing everything. What would you say to that person in this season from your heart, from what, which, what you've learned? They're in the storm and emotions, their flesh are dictating things. What would you share with them? Girlfriend, I see you. We see you. God sees you. He sees everything you're going through. Take deep breaths. Pause. Give yourself grace. You are a woman that will give grace to everybody. You're pouring it out all over the place, but you're not pouring it out on yourself. Give yourself grace. Take some time. Go for a walk. Clear your mind. And if you are feeling bound by fear, there are so many resources online. There is support. There is good Christian groups and ministries that you do not have to feel alone. You do not have to feel isolated right now just because you are quarantined. There is no, nothing. We said God is so into the details. It is not random that he would quarantine us when we have access like we have access today. 
this is such a blessing that we don't have to be alone, but we do know what you're going through and we see you, but you've got to, you have got to gird up. You have got to stay strong. And you have to remember that this is a chosen time. This is one of those times where we say, we have not been picked on. We have been picked out. You have been called out of the lineup. You're off, you're off as, you know what, V, I'm thinking about like, we're all off the bench. We're all, right. This we're is great the bench. <laughs> Ain't nobody on the bench. Coach put me in. Right. <laughs> you know? And, and some of us are used to being on the bench. Some of that might be, you know, people are used to being on the bench. But we are all called to get off the bench and get in the game right now. Yeah. And I just want to, before we close out, because it just dropped in my spirit, that the enemy uses isolation to keep people in the shadow of shame and to keep them in the, the shadow of fear. It is an intentional tool that the enemy uses. And so the same way you would get angry at a robber who was trying to physically rob you, don't let the enemy rob you of your connection and push you into isolation. It is a trick and a tool that he specifically uses. Rise up and stay connected. Stay connected. And on the flip side, you just share, this is time for acts of love. Find a sister you have not spoken to in weeks and write her a letter, give her a call, make it intentional, not an email. Call her, pick up the phone. It's amazing. The cell phone, actually, we can use it to call people. <laughs> So call, handwritten letter, but on both ends, do not isolate because that is just a trick of the enemy. And on the side of love, who haven't you talked to that the Lord has dropped their name in your spirit and you've been ignoring it? Pick up the pen, pick up the phone. Let's get connected. Let's stay connected because this is a season in which we can do it. Yeah, we have... There is, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. You know what? Our time, our 30 minutes are up and I love you, BFF. Thank you. I love you too. Oh, thank you. So we always end every single one of our um, broadcasts with tag your it. So everyone who is on this um, broadcast, we have had a movement for the past 20 days. Flood my news feed with how tonight's conversation, how your intentional look seeking for joy shows up for you. And use the hashtag take 30 FCLG, take 30, F-C-L-G, take a picture, create a post, tag me, you're it. Spread joy, we are on assignment. Show up as light and love for the rest of the world that is dark and depending on us to show up. Ah, so tomorrow, five o'clock, I can't wait for you to meet this young lady. Her name is Jada Smith. She's 21, she is an amazing college student and she has a mission and a call on her life as a young person. And she is going to walk us through as a young 20 something year old, how she is seeking joy and she is overcoming trial in order to serve other young people and bring light to them. So the voice of our young people will be on the broadcast tomorrow at five o'clock. Sis, I love you again. Thank you so much. Love you too. Send out, send out in the comments how Michelle sent thank yous and the name of the ministry. We did not name it. 
Women Gathered. We are an online community um, that was started a little over a year ago. So um, it's the marriage of my ministry as well as my partner, Deborah Lovett. And um, it's a beautiful place to go for support, for prayer requests. It's a very vibrant praying community, a very excited Mm -hmm. community of faith. So come join us. Absolutely. All righty. That's it for today. We love you. We Spread do love you. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow at five for our next joy conversation, conquering joy, overcoming adversity with Jada Smith. Love you. Bye-bye.